I put coke, salt water, milk, muddy water, and melted snow in my reverse osmosis system just to see what would happen. I also cut open the filters to have a good look. I did this all in order to help me understand a little bit better how reverse osmosis systems work and also to help you to understand if a reverse osmosis system is right for you. The reverse osmosis system that I tested everything on is the Depuro system. They sent this to me so I could do this video. So thank you to Depuro for providing this for my experiments. The first thing I want to point out is that there are two styles of reverse osmosis systems. Like this one, you have one that requires power and it uses a pump. So if you get a system like this, you need to make sure that you have electricity under the sink. The other system has a tank and it uses the water pressure to work. So if you wanna get a system like that, you need to make sure you have enough room under your sink. So what is reverse osmosis? It basically takes water and takes all of the minerals out of it. There are minerals that are harmful for us to consume, like lead, aluminum, and mercury. There are also minerals that are beneficial for us, like calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So it's important to know that reverse osmosis removes all minerals. So if you do use a reverse osmosis system, you need to make sure that you're getting the minerals some other way, the beneficial minerals, that is. To help me test things out, I got a TDS meter. This measures the total dissolved solids and it gives you a reading in parts per million. For a reference, my normal tap water, I was getting about 302 parts per million, which is kind of on the verge of acceptable to high total dissolved solids. And to compare, I used Kirkland bottled water. It had 20 parts per million. And then when I ran it through the Deep Pearl filtered water system, it was 10 parts per million. So the reverse osmosis system is definitely working. It's taking out even more minerals than the bottled water that you would get. So how does this work? It has three filters. It has the PPC, RO, and CTO filters. The PPC removes larger things like rust or corrosion or sediment. And the filter to me fills a lot like paper and seems kind of similar to a coffee filter. Then the RO filter, this is the actual membrane. It removes heavy metals like lead and mercury. It basically takes hard water to soft water. The filter itself seems to be some sort of fabric roll. There are a lot of diagrams online that show this process, but basically the filter only allows pure water to pass through the membrane and everything else goes to wastewater. Oh yeah. A reverse osmosis system has wastewater, a lot of it. Basically, the more pure water that you have on your tap, the less wastewater you will have. But in general, even if you have good tap water, you should expect wastewater that amounts to at least four or more times the amount of filtered water that you get. The last filter in this set is the CTO filter and it removes chlorine and organic matter. The filter feels like very fine sandpaper. Before I show you all of the tests that I did with this filter, I'm going to offer a very obvious disclaimer. Everything I'm doing here is horrible to do on your reverse osmosis system and is definitely going to ruin it. Don't do any of this. I did this so you don't have to. So the test I did was swapping out the PPC and the CTO filter order. I also ran Coke through the filter, melted snow, food coloring, grape juice, salt water, milk, and muddy water. And here are the results. Swapping the filters didn't seem to change much with water. When I changed the filter order, I was still getting filtered water. I do suspect it would probably change the life of one of the filters, so that's one thing that you'd want to be careful of if you did mix up the order of the filters. I did a test with some food coloring, and the filter would separate the colored water from the pure water, which was pretty cool. Everything else that was not just water, when I put the PPC filter first, everything would go straight to wastewater. Nothing would get filtered through. When I used the correct order and having the CTO filter first, basically I got the same results, but I would get a little bit of water to filter through. When I tested the melted snow, one thing that I found to be really interesting is it actually started with 3 ppm before it was filtered and 31 ppm after being filtered. So, so obviously something was going on here. So I did a test and I got my normal test water and I got my normal tap water and I tested hot versus cold. I got some ice from my tap. And when I tested the ice water, it was 178 ppm and the hot water was 485 
ppm. So obviously the temperature has a major impact on the reading and that could explain some of why the snow was so low, but I'm still a bit baffled by getting three parts per million. If you have any thoughts on why this number is so low with melted snow, write a comment below and let me know. My best guess is that with the snow, because it hasn't gone through the ground yet, it hasn't had a chance to pick up any minerals, and so it is very pure water. So some of my thoughts after running a bunch of junk through the filter like grape juice or coke, obviously you shouldn't be doing this and the only thing you should put through a filter is water, but honestly I was a bit surprised that basically everything went to wastewater. And the question for you, if you are considering getting a reverse osmosis filter, here is what I would say. Before you get a reverse osmosis system, you should probably get a TDS meter or test strips, and I can post some links below so you can see what I use. But really they are inexpensive, and they're not, they're not perfect for testing water, but they'll give you a good general idea of what the water quality of your water is already like. And just keep in mind, with a TDS meter, the reading you're getting is with all minerals, the good and the bad. So what you wanna be checking for is if you have an excessively high reading. Another thing for you to consider, if you don't like the taste or the smell of the water coming out of your tap, that's probably a pretty good reason to get a reverse osmosis system. It will help remove the smell and the taste and have consistent water. Another thing to point out is your tap water, because it has minerals, it does have a fairly unique taste to it. And you'll probably notice if you travel around the country, everywhere you go, the taste is slightly different with the tap water. If you like the way your water tastes and you have a safe reading, you probably don't need a reverse osmosis system. If, however, you like the taste of bottled water and you prefer that over your tap water, that could be a good reason for getting a reverse osmosis system. Another thing to consider is is the styles of reverse osmosis. Like this one with a pump, the advantage is that the pressure is always pretty good and consistent, but you will need power under your sink. And because it has a pump, this is something that you will hear. One of the advantages of the water pressure only reverse osmosis system is that it is very quiet, you don't hear anything, but sometimes it can have low water pressure depending on your actual water pressure and the filters. I have some links posted below and some thoughts on this filter if you want to read that. And if you have any questions or comments about reverse osmosis, please leave the comment below. Thanks.